So yesterday was a nice day for all of us. And I said something of a different level. We've been talking all the time about the mundane thing. And these things sometimes are very, <coughs> what's it? It's all right. Uh, are of so much importance, we think. But when I talked to you yesterday, I hope you all realized that we have to now jump into another realm of a subtler understanding of Sajjo. First we were worried about our families, our children, our households, then our marriages, one after another, all these questions came up. And we were concerned about all these things, little, little things. Then we also got concerned about the ashrams which we were having, the problems of the ashram, what we have been doing, how we have been facing the problems, how people are creating problems. That's how our humanity started, acquiring a subtler understanding. And then we also realized that we are blessed by God, that there's something great that is always looking after us, some higher force, some special attention is there about us. This is what we realized. Today I was explaining how it happens. That how we realize that God is helping us. Any problem is an effect of some sort of a cause, a real problem. Like Mona wrote a letter that she was driving in a motorway and the car went out of control and the brake would not act. And there was a car coming from the right, car coming from the left, cars going in front and behind. And she felt that they will be finished. Two of them were traveling to surgery. So the cause was the car or the brake or whatever it was, mechanism, and the effect was for the problem. So now how to overcome that problem? Supposing you try to neutralize the effect, you cannot because cause is still there. You try to improve the cause, it doesn't work out. Then what do you do? So the easiest thing is to cross the cause, to ascend over, to go beyond the cause. So the cause does not exist for you, so the effect does not exist. As long as the cause exists in your attention, the effect will be there. So what did she do? She just prayed to me. Just thought of me. That mother now is my last chance. That's all. So the cause disappeared. Because you go beyond it. And the effect also disappeared. And she was surprised. So you must ascend away from the cause. Now a problem. My wife is like this, my husband like this, my family life is like this, uh, surgery are like this, all kinds of things are there. It's an effect. Now what's the cause? It's such and such cause. All right. Now what, how do you get negation of the cause? Surrender. You are, you have the right to do that. You have a knack to do it. You can do it. 
you are capable of it. You are entitled to do it. So you don't need to forget. You just forget. If you surrender that cause, it helps you go away. But that is the thing at that time to remember that you have to ascend, to go beyond the cause is the best way to get rid So, I've been playing with you, you had causes to say, Oh mother, this is the problem, I have no job, now I have a job, and the job is to be had, and the wife is not there, she must have a wife, and the wife has a problem, and she is to be divorced, and that is that, and this is that. Then I'm like that, I'm very bad, because there's a bhut in me. So the bhut is the cause. And I'm behaving like this because there's a bhut in me. That's also a scapegoat, I think. So first you go beyond that, saying, what is bhut? Who is bhut? I know my mother. A mother, you look after this bhut of mine. That's all. But for that, an emergency has to come to you. Otherwise, you just don't do it with that power. When you are in an emergent condition, then it works out fast. When it is not emergency, it is half-hearted, like Muna's condition. There was another case where a journalist was traveling from, uh, I think, Yonawla or something, and he's uh, his brakes broke down and he was with another journalist. So both of them were coming. This another journalist told me. The another one was surgery. So he found his brakes are not working and he found his uh, car is going. In front there is a big truck coming up and another truck coming from behind. And there was no way for him to turn or to get out and his brakes were on. That was an emergency, such an emergency that they have left into his mind that, oh God, now the last moment has come. Now we finish, there is a, a truck coming from there and another truck and within a split of a second he was to be finished. Then he just closed his eyes and he told his friend, think of mother, that's all. And then what he found, that he was nicely crawling on the road and the trucks were left behind and the brake was good. But that emergency has to come. Human beings are such that unless and until they are put into tight corners, they never do that. Once they are in a tight corner, then they do it. That is the reason why people try to take acetic life. Because if you are an acetic, then you are in a tight corner. They go to Gobi Desert to create that emergency within you. So then you think of God. But that's too late to go to Gobi Desert. They create problems for them to get into tight corners so that they can get out of it. But for surgery, if they are wise, they need not have. But how do we achieve it otherwise without any getting tired? Only way is meditation. Everybody must meditate is the point. If you do not meditate, you can continue for a while. You may be alright for a while, for two, three months, maybe two years, but then you drop. Many people think, oh, what's the need to meditate? You see, it's alright. If you don't meditate, it doesn't matter. It's not true. Because in meditate only, meditation only you grow. In emergency, you suddenly grow, no doubt. I mean, you just, like a jack, in the box, just come up with a spray. But if you have to have a continuous growth, then you must meditate, allow the thought, after thoughts coming, and then allow them to subside because you rise into the state of thoughtless awareness, and in that thoughtless awareness you grow and you grow in your detachment to the cause of all the effects. 
If there is no cause, there is no effect. But this is the problem with us, is that we do not meditate normally. Only when it comes to absolute last point, now you have to fall in the well. Then we think of it. Maybe at that moment you are helped, but you don't grow. Growth can only come if you meditate. That is one very important part, is complete help to people who meditate. In the normal life, how do we grow? If we have no oxygen, we cannot grow. We have to have sufficient oxygen, we have to have sufficient food, we have to have all these things. But in spirituality, you grow through meditation. There is no way out. Those who think they can grow are bumptious. Actually bumptious people. Because they can talk a lot about Sahaja Yoga. I have seen people who talk too much about Sahaja Yoga. They can give big lectures, this, that, but have no vibrations at all. They can't do any work for Sahaja Yoga. They are not collecting, they have no sense to be collecting. All kinds of problems. But the growth is to be achieved through meditation. That is one part. That is, we can say, is the worship, is the Buddha. Then you don't have to give up anything, you just become detached. Detached from the cause itself. That's one point. Secondly, is that this I would say will take you to the subtler side of your emotional bindings. Because emotional binding has given you certain identification, you are a Christian or a Hindu or a Muslim or this and that, or a British or any kind of a, a race, whatever you have to call it. All those things will drop because you get attached for some. So these emotional bindings is my brother, he is my sister, I am worried about my wife, I am worried about my child. All these emotional bindings which make you a smaller personality will drop out and you will have one emotional binding is that I am growing in my compassion. Compassion is active. My compassion is effective. My compassion is a light. My compassion gives me discretion. I am a yogi. And secondly, you read about Sahaja Yoga, you know about Sahaja Yoga, you, you know the technique of Sahaja Yoga, you raise your Kundalini, you clean your chakras, Try to understand about mantras, you master your mantras, you master your deities, you please them. All these things when they are done properly, then your mental bindings will drop. Those who think they are great scientists, they will know that this is no science. The science of God's technique is much more. Those who think they are overread, well-read people when they read about Sahaja Yoga and work it out on themselves and see for themselves and on others, they will know that whatever they have read is all stupid, has no meaning, is empty. And that's how a kind of an emptiness will come. Emptiness of ego. Because you see that knowledge is so great. Like Newton said that, Knowledge is like an ocean and I am like a little child uh, collecting some pebbles at its shore. What an understanding. So that emptiness comes in and then the real knowledge starts coming out. The identification with real knowledge comes. You talk 
when you talk, that talk has an effect. That's a mantra. You just don't jabber. Oh, I know Sahaja Yoga. I've been in Sahaja Yoga for 15 years to for nothing. You may be there for 100 years, but you may remain the donkey as donkey is. Absolutely. But you may remain there only for one year. And you may become from a donkey a human being and a yogi too. But that is what we have to, first of all, decondition ourselves by attaching ourselves emotionally to Mother. I mean, you have an advantage over many other yogis of the world who came for things that had nothing to look for. They knew of a primordial mother, they knew about this, but they had no form. You have a form. You are very fortunate and lucky people, you have a form. It's easy to adore a form than to adore something abstract in the air, you see. Absolute consciousness, how do you adore it, where do you catch it? But that attachment doesn't mean in any way that you have to give me anything. What do you give me? Nothing. But detachment from the cause. And this works out. You have seen it in your lifetime. You also say that it works out, but that's how it worked out. What is bandha? It's nothing. But you are attaching yourself to your mother. You are just telephoning to her. This is a telephone going to your mother. That's all. You know, I also play with you. I also say, all right, I give you a bandha. I am giving bandha to myself. It's a telephone call. Just a telephone call. But the faith has developed now that yes, this is the real faith, where you get completely detached in your emotional things. It's just, my mother, all right, just give her a bandhan, finished. My father, give him a bandhan. My brother, give him a bandhan. What are you doing? Bandhan, what are you doing? You are putting them in the, in the bonds of your mother. But you are not conscious that you are doing that. Just binding them with the love of your mother, which is flowing through your hand. What are these vibrations? Is your mother's love? You've got it. It is flowing through you. But what about your love for your mother? And that is what I find that at the time when there is complete emergency, that surrender comes. And it works. So, there is no need to create any emergencies. You must slow and steadily work it out. And it will build up by itself. You will have that power, I assure you. But meditation is one way. Another is the knowledge of Sahaja Yoga. Not showing off, not telling others, but working it out in yourself. Different chakras, how they work out. On yourself, not on others. Once you start teaching others, it's a booth. You better learn it for yourself in within yourself. I know who has mastered which chakra, which. Nobody tell others that this is the way to do it, that is absolute nonsensical ego. So such thing should not be done. If somebody asks you, you can tell, individual, but on a large scale, you do not give lectures on that. And don't confuse people. Now, so we have two things that we have to get over our emotional uh, grossness and our mental grossness. Same with our physical grossness. Physical grossness can be overcome if you surrender yourself to one medicine is vibrations. Like Anupama, my grandchild, told her mother, you were born in allopathy, then you are falling homeopathy. Tomorrow you will find out some jumbopathy, there is some numbopathy. So, but I am born in God. And 
I follow only God's plan. And God will look after me and God will cure me. So my daughter said, why? You may also change. He said, why? Because God never changes. Simple answer. God will cure me. But you must have that much assent to say that. As you just jump out in the time of emergency. Same sort of an urge, that same sort of a personality should be within you to say that. Just if you say, Oh, God, please save me. God has no time for such. You have no time for God. God has no time for you. Simple thing. So from sublime to mundane things when we come, we exist in both the things and we are affected. Whether we are in the lamp or in the light or in the oil, we are at a separate point. And we if give the effectiveness without being the cause. Because you are beyond the cause. So there is no need to create any cause for anything, but you see the effect. So the, once the cause is finished, effect is achieved and it achieved what is to be achieved, the correctness of it, the correct thing. You do not get perversity, but if you go with the cause, then you can have perversity, you can have all kinds of problems. So the best thing is to detach yourself from causes. And then you get the effect like as I told you that the brake got alright. The effect was there. The car was alright. Everything was fine. So the effect was alright. But the cause was lost. There was no cause. Why? How? How the thing was perfected? If you ask the effect of it, you say, how did it get? can't explain it, it work out. So because the cause is missing, you cannot put it to any cause. You sometimes say it's divine whether it won't come. So the only cause that is really effective is divinity. But the divinity should not be just as a, a mundane sort of a thing, all right, yes, mother's photograph is there, namaste, go ahead, right. namaste, good morning, mother, finished. That's something. You have to know.